Hi, I'm Alexander DeRoche. Hi, I'm Andrew Dribley, and we are making a zinc iodide to excel. Yes. Alright, what I have here is a 0.9 molar solution of potassium iodide. Um, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill the speaker up 200 milliliters. Um, I measured the, um, the volume of the flask and it is approximately 200 milliliters. And um, okay, so there's that. Um, this is iodine. This is 10 grams of iodine. And I'm now going to put this into the porous cup. Wait, no, you I done. So now I'm gonna lower the porous cup into the solution. And uh, there we go. Then I'm gonna uh, fill the the inside of the porous cup to the same water level as is in the beaker. Carefully. Oops. All right, so there's that. As you can see, this is graphite from a pencil, and this is a zinc strip. So what I'm gonna do now is put the graphite into the porous cup and the zinc strip into the beaker. And these two uh, shall conduct electricity to make our fan over here turn. Attach the clip leads to the cathode which is the carbon rod, and the anode, which is the sink. As you can see, the voltmeter reads 1.35. This is a fan from one of the candy uh, jogger thing things, and hopefully we should be able to power it, and uh, this uh, is the cathode of the reaction. We put this to the yellow, that, oops, we read this. Uh, Okay, and then take the anode side like that, and well, it doesn't work. The reason why the fan doesn't work is that our cell here does not produce enough voltage to power the fan, so instead we're going to have to try something else. Okay, next you attach the anode side of the solution to the negative side of the clock. Then you attach the cathode side to the positive side of the clock. And now you have a clock that moves forward.